My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. I have a question for you guys. What do you think of my brows today? And I'm more actually asking about the color of my brows. I know that they're looking kind of fuzzy and fluffy and I think that's fine, but I'm actually interested in the color. If you've been following me for a long, long time, then you'll know that the reason that I'm not allowed to buy any brow products this year, like brow pencils as replacements, even though I've run completely out of them, is that I started the year with an Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow. This is it right here. It's the Dip Brow Pomade and it's in the color Chocolate. And I have been under the impression that this is way, way too warm for me because I remember using it for a while and then realizing suddenly one day that my brows just had kind of this kind of orangey reddish undertone that I don't like at all. Even though my hair has that undertone, I just felt like it made my brows look a little bit weird and fake. I prefer a cool undertone for my brow products. So I had decluttered this into a box during my decluttering into a box video, and I've become so frustrated lately with not having a proper brow product. I've been using eyeshadow and it was fine for a while, but today I just suddenly was like, Rah! I want a proper brow product. So I decided to dig this out and mix it with some cool toned eyeshadows to make a cooler toned product. But when I opened it, it looked so much less warm toned than I remember. It looked actually cooler toned than I remember. So I went ahead and put it into my brows unadulterated, unadulterated, unaltered. Maybe it's because my brows are dyed. So the cool tone dye is kind of toning down the warm undertone of this but I actually don't think it looks that bad. I might start using it. But I would like to know what you think. How does it look on camera? Does it look like it has a weird red bleeding around the edges or does it look good, natural? Let me know what you think. Anyway, it's time for my favorites, my September favorites. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the meat of the video. The first thing on my list is this brush, but it's really a technique. So this is a brush I've had for ages. It's the Wet n Wild brush. <laughs> it's a Wet n Wild brush. I believe that this brush is part of the Wet n Wild professional collection. I'm not even sure that's exactly what it's called, but I will insert some kind of word or picture or something to confirm. Anyway, I'm not sure what this one is, but it is a, oh my battery. My battery is about to die. I have to change the battery. Hold on. I haven't even gotten through my first favorite and already I had to change the battery. I don't know how you guys stand me. Anyway, here's what the brush looks like. I, I want to give you a close-up so you can really see what I'm talking about. It's, it's flat. It's flatter than it is wide, so it's not perfectly symmetrical in this direction, but it's really fluffy. So it's pretty fluffy, and here it is from the top. I don't know if that will help anyone to see what it looks like, but you know, it's like a medium-sized, fluffy blending brush. Now, I have previously belonged to the school of uber blending with brushes in descending size order. So when I'm starting to build an eye look, unless I'm building a single shadow look from the lid up, which I've actually been doing more and more lately, traditionally what I've done is that I've started with a really fluffy brush, this brush, which is from that same pack, but this is like a hugely fluffy brush. And a transition shade to deepen up my crease and to bring my crease artificially higher onto my brow bone because I have hooded eyes. So I'll take this really fluffy brush and I'll take a crease shade like that and I'll just fluff, 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 fluff all over that part of my lid, diffuse, 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 blend, 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 blend. You guys have seen me do that. So then I'll go in with a slightly smaller brush and a slightly darker shade and then, you know, down onto the lid, pack the lid shade, darken the outer corner, blah, blah, blah. So it, you know, it's what Jaclyn Hill taught us all to do. I've been doing that for a long time, but lately I've been watching, first of all, lately I've been doing that technique, which I actually would consider one of my favorites for this month, a sneak favorite, which is the technique that I demonstrated in my single shadow eye look video where I packed a single shadow all over my lid and then blended it up so it's kind of like the opposite. I've been doing that all month long and I've really been loving that so that counts as a favorite. But 
kind of as an extension of that, I started using this brush more recently to shape the darker shade on my eyelid above my crease. So the effect that I was describing getting with this brush by using kind of a darker shade and bringing it up just below my brows in order to make my eye sockets look bigger than they are, I've been doing that by getting a gradient and sort of just crossing my fingers and hoping that the gradient shapes out to be the shape I want it to be. But using this little brush for about half a month now, I've been going in and like packing the transition shade onto my upper lid in the shape that I want it like tick, 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 tick. and I'll pack it with the brush turned this way so it's sort of the flat part of the brush is making like a line long ways and then I'll turn it the other way so that it's long ways up and down and I'll use that shape to blend the edge and diffuse it out and I've been able essentially to get the same effect that I am looking for when I do the more diffuse brush version of applying eyeshadow, but it's much more controlled and it also doesn't take as much time and there's less blending involved because I can just blend it until it looks perfect and then stop. I don't need to like blend, 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 blend until my arms fall off. And the reason I started doing this, I believe, is that I've been watching a bunch of Natasha Denona demonstrations because I'm obsessed with the gold palette. I don't know what it is with me and Natasha Denona shadows, but I just keep wanting to watch Natasha Denona tutorials and watch her apply those shadows. And she goes in with a brush about this size into the crease and up onto the socket. She doesn't use like the big fluffy brush business. So I think that watching her has kind of trickled down to me and this brush is the one that I've pulled from my collection to imitate her technique. And right now I feel like I'll never go back, although I'm sure that I will because I'm always flip-flopping between enjoying one thing and then enjoying another thing. I'm always kind of in the midst of change with my tastes and my habits. But right now, I can't get enough of using this little brush and it has quickly become basically my favorite eyeshadow brush to use and I've been using it and using it and using it. The second thing that I've been reaching for and reaching for and just loving this month actually is a product that actually was pretty new to my collection last month, about two months ago. I was at Sephora buying a birthday gift for a friend and this was a 100 point perk at the time. So I grabbed this with 100 of my Sephora points. It's the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color, which I think is a fairly new product, a new release. I think that might be why they had it as a Sephora 100 point perk because they were trying to get attention for it. And it worked. It worked for me. It's in the color Babe, which is build as a pink. I talked about this in my lipstick declutter. If you watched that, obviously it made it through the declutter with flying colors. It's build as a pink and it does look pink, like it'll look pink right now in the swatch. But when I wear this on my lips, it really looks like a soft red on me. And I love that. I love that kind of soft, casual, bitten, flushed red. And the formula of this is absolutely gorgeous. It's super pigmented, but it's also super nourishing. I can't get enough of it. And since I got the sample, I've been using it and using it. I almost put it in my favorites last month, but I felt like it was too soon. I had had it for a couple of weeks, but my lust for it has not died. And so I just love this. And to be honest, this product in a couple of other colors is currently on my ever-changing <laughs> wish list of things that I think I'll buy in 2019. We'll see if I actually still want that in 2019 because so far almost everything that's ever been on that list has faded from that list before the end of the year has come. But right now the colors Telluride and I think Bear, which is the most neutral of the, the colors in this range, are both on my Sephora loves list and my wish list. Someone mentioned, I'm trying to figure out how to better describe this formula. Somebody in my comments section in the video, in my lipstick declutter actually, said that they find this to be kind of a much better version of the kind of product that Glossier was trying to create with their Generation Gs. I used to have three Generation Gs and I decluttered all three of them in that video. And I completely agree. It's like this is what Generation G wanted to be. It's luscious 
but it's not too shiny so it still has that kind of casual look but it's not drying it's incredibly nourishing it's long lasting it's a lot longer lasting than you would think a product like this would be and i would never call it a balm because balm to me implies that it wears away and this does not this it's really a lipstick it behaves like a lipstick it's just soft and nourishing and crushed and velvety and lovely and it's like a lipstick without feeling like you've gone to the trouble to put on a lipstick and the color of this one in particular is so so pretty so i've just been constantly reaching for bobby brown crushed lip color in the color babe i can't say i don't recommend this product i think this is a really special new thing on the market and i, I think that it will endure but a related favorite lest you immediately rush out and purchase a bunch of bobby brown crushed lip colors my other favorite this month was decluttering my lipsticks honestly it's one of the best things i've done <laughs> in regards to my makeup collection lately and by lately i mean in months i think a lot of you have already seen that video but the thing that's amazing to me is the current state of my lipstick collection so the after in that video where I show my storage and I show how all of the lipsticks now fit into the storage on top of my vanity and I can see them all. It's like I can see all of my choices and I can actually make a choice, an informed choice. And by that I mean a choice that's informed by the visual knowledge of all of the lipsticks that I have to choose from. It was never like that before. It was always just kind of a chaotic moment, like what lipstick should I get? And you can't, make an informed choice when they're all scattered around. Nobody can keep like 55 lipsticks in their head and make a good choice about which one out of 55 is gonna go with this look. There's always some kind of luck involved, some kind of randomness, just you look and it's like the one that catches your eye or the one that's new. The difference between the way I used to choose which lip color I would wear and the way that I now choose which lip color I'm going to wear on any given day is massive and I'm so so much happier with the way that things are now. I'm so excited to continue that series and declutter all of the rest of my categories. It's probably going to take some time but I will go through category by category and I can't wait to feel about all of my other makeup the way that I currently feel about my group of lipsticks. You know what I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. The color on my lips right now is basically the wine I had with dinner maybe a little lip liner plus wine stain is what I'm sporting right now and they're dry enough and it's kind of worn down enough that I think I can apply this over top and it won't mess it up so you can see what it looks like it's not exactly sheer but I wouldn't say it's totally opaque either I feel like the wine stain is showing through just a little bit but you get the general idea and gosh I just think it's such a pretty color and such a pretty formula. This is what I have on my eyes by the way right now. I shopped my stash for my Urban Decay Moon Dust palette and that video probably isn't up yet so this is a spoiler but it'll be up soon and this is one of the things I shopped my stash for and I've been wearing it pretty much every day so that's what I used to build this look but actually I used it in tandem with my Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. I shopped my stash a couple days ago and every time I've reached for Moon Dust I've reached for this in tandem and I've been reminded of how much I I absolutely love this brilliant palette. I've been thinking a lot lately about my jonesing for luxury eyeshadows. Like I'm so fixated on trying out a Natasha Denona palette next year and I'm for some reason starting to think a lot about kind of condensing my eyeshadow collection down to a smaller group of eyeshadows but having like more luxury shadows mixed in like Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. I've kind of just been fantasizing and letting my wild luxury consumerist fantasy self run away with herself. And this, picking this up and using it has brought me crashing back to earth in the best way. It's just like so good. I'd say this is another surprise last minute addition to my favorites. This is definitely currently a really, really hot item for me in my collection. Another product I have taken great pleasure in reaching for this month has been my Erin's Faces Peptide Sunscreen. And I talked all about this, all about it, in my sunscreen video on Friday. It should already be up, so I'm actually not going to say anything about it because 
If you want to know more about how I decided on this sunscreen and why I love it, then all of that is already available for you to watch. And if you've already watched it, I don't want to repeat myself. But needless to say, I'm so happy that I decided on this. I'm so happy that I got the chance to try it. And it gives me warm, tingly feelings every time I use it, not to mention the fact that it performs perfectly. Those are actually all of my beauty favorites for this month, but I have a couple of other things that were actually the first things that sprung to mind when I thought about my month and I thought about what I had really, really been loving over the course of the month. This is the first one. It's my robe. And when my hair check-ins video goes up, where I was filming myself every night and every morning showing what I was doing with my hair, you'll see me wearing this robe in several check-ins in that video because it finally got cool enough in Los Angeles for me to wear this robe sometimes in the early morning and sometimes at night. It's still hot, it's still hot here, but there have been a few mornings where there was just the littlest whiff of a nip in the air and then as soon as I felt that, I was like, I'm wearing my robe <laughs> because I love this thing so much. And here's what I love about it. There's nothing that a tall woman wants more than a floor length robe, a truly floor length robe. Like it covers her toes. It drags a little bit when she walks. Because previously to my discovery of this robe, I thought that there was no such thing. A really lush, fluffy, plush bathrobe that would truly be floor length. But I found one and I found it through, I'm about 5'9", by the way, 5'8 and a half actually, but you know, I've only ever been able to find like knee length or calf length robes, even when they're supposed to be long, like long robes are knee length on me and short robes show my butt. So a couple of years ago when we were still living in Michigan and it was freezing and I was fixated on finding the loveliest, lushest, plushiest, longest robe that there was to be had. I discovered through a prolonged internet search a website called Long Tall Sally. And Long Tall Sally is clothing specifically designed for women who are over 5'9". And most of it's like business casual or business wear. It's like suits for women who can't usually find suits to fit them, pants with really long inseams, pencil skirts that are long enough to actually be the right length on really tall women. And it's, it starts at 5'9 for height and then goes up. So it really is designed for women who are way, way taller than average. So actually in terms of buying clothes from the site, it's not really something that is for me, partly because of my lifestyle and my fashion sense and also just because I'm actually just at the bottom end of the height requirement for that website. But for a woman who wants a really, really, really long robe, it is the perfect place. I don't think this color is still on there. This is the shawl collar robe, but the last time I checked, they had the shawl collar robe in navy blue and it was on sale actually. I think it was on sale for about 60 bucks. And then they always have other robes too. There's like a floral one. They're always getting new robes every season and then eventually they go on sale. I think I actually did buy this one on sale. Anyway, this is one of my favorite things that I own. Like it's one of my favorite, it's one of my all time favorites. And it just was a favorite this month for two reasons. One, it got cool enough to wear it again, which it hasn't been for months and months. And two, because I was just having such a down month. I was so bummed out and Really, all I wanted was to crawl into this robe, and crawl into my chair right there, and either read a book or work on editing YouTube videos or respond to my YouTube comments. And that is pretty much what I did. I did that all month in this robe, whenever it was cool enough to wear it, and it was my favorite. So I was loving it primarily for comfort this month, but I also must say that it looks regal, like it's ridiculous because it's this gorgeous burgundy color, kind of like an old smoking jacket, like a traditional smoking jacket. And I have been teased by friends that I'm very Hugh Hefner when I wear this. So it can go both ways for me. It can either be my security snuggie or it can be my regal house coat. There is one more thing that I wanted to mention, which is that 
I have really been loving being on Instagram this month. That's been another thing that has kind of helped keep me afloat emotionally. I've been trying to take a picture of my outfit of the day most days, not every single day, but most days. And in the clouds of my dark month, it always gave me like a little bit of something to look forward to, just a little bit of something fun to focus on, something that was creative, but very lighthearted to do every day. A routine to come back to every day and I found like one spot in my house where the lights really good and our weird plaster walls look really good in that light and so I've just been just sticking to the formula of taking the picture in the same spot in the same window every day and I feel like I've kind of figured out a way to participate more on Instagram so that's really, that's a favorite. It's like a favorite thing that happened this month. That's a favorite thing that I'm doing this month. And it's exciting to um, connect with some of you guys over there. And some of you have been DMing me and following me and sometimes mentioning me in your stories and in your posts. And that's just really exciting. It's like an extension of the joy that I found connecting to you through YouTube, but on this other platform that's about photography. And I really enjoy that. And that is it. Those are all my favorites for the month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.